Hey, it's Justin Bevins again. We're on video number nine in our home buying series. And I apologize in advance because this one is going to take a while. We're talking about due diligence. That's your right to get in and find out everything you can about a home after you're under contract so that you can make a decision whether you want to go through with the purchase. So there's lots of things you're going to look at, but you've got to remember that your due diligence period is limited. You don't have a lot of time usually, so you've got to get in and get it done very quickly. And the sooner you get it done, the sooner you can potentially negotiate any problems with the seller uh, if you decide to proceed. So the first thing is a home inspection. You don't have to get one, but it's always a good idea. It's cheap insurance to make sure that you're not buying a money, money pit. Now, a home inspector, a professional home inspector who's licensed and trained um, or certified and trained to find home problems, he's going to go through the home and he's going to find a variety of things. Some are going to be small, some are going to be big. In your request for repairs for the seller, if you're going to ask the seller for anything, credit or repairs, focus on the big things. That's usually what I tell my buyers. If you ask for too much from the seller, a lot of times they won't give you anything and then sometimes it can sour the deal. The whole thing can fall apart. Focus on the important things, the big items, the health and safety items when it comes to that inspection report. The second thing that's going to happen is your lender is going to order an appraisal. So an appraiser is going to go out there, they're going to take photos of the property, compare it to other recent sales around the area, and they're going to come up with a value. Now all they're trying to do is show the bank that you didn't overpay for the property. Usually appraisals come in right on the money because that's all they really are trying to verify is that you didn't overpay. Sometimes you get a generous appraiser might give you, give you more value. That's great if you're the buyer. Um, sometimes they come in low and we'll talk about in a future video what happens if you get that low appraisal and how you handle that. Now the third thing might be a wood destroying pest report. In certain areas termites and wood destroying pests are very common and wood destroying pest report would include wood fungus, wood rot, basically anything that's destroying the wood on the house, all right, um, other than just old age. So um, if you've gotten one of those, it's going to spell out, it's going to be a complete report about what's wrong with the house with regard to wood destroying pests and how it could be treated or rectified. And it may be your responsibility, it may be the seller's responsibility, depending on what you agreed upon in the contract. Um, the fourth thing is insurability. All right? You're going to want to make sure that the property can be insured. So you're going to contact your insurance agent, give them the address, and make sure that the property is insurable. And you're also going to want to find out how much it's going to cost. Sometimes, say a property is next to a forest or a high fire uh, hazard severity area or high brush area, sometimes your homeowner's insurance will be more expensive. And so you'd need to know that before you uh, go through with the purchase. Okay. The fifth thing is you're going to get disclosures from the sellers. Okay? Sellers are required in each state to disclose certain things and you're going to get some paperwork that's related to that. It's usually a series of questions that they're responsible for answering um, that talks about any issues that might be material to a potential buyer. Once you get those disclosures, you may have questions about some of the things that are in them and that's a good time to discuss them with your agent and if you have questions about them your agent can get more information from the listing agent and the sellers okay the sixth thing is homeowners association if you're buying an area that has a homeowner association you're going to get a bunch of documents during your escrow process and some of those could be budgets for the association, um, could be uh, occupancy, how many are owner occupied versus not. There's going to be rules and regulations. There's going to be a variety of documents depending on the association that you're buying into. Read them carefully, especially the rules and regulations. They have jurisdiction over what you do to your house a lot of times on the exterior mostly. But say for instance you're in a condo complex. Some associations might say, for instance, you can't put down wood floors on an upstairs unit because it's too noisy uh, walking around and it's an inconvenience for downstairs units. So there are little rules like that in associations that you have to watch out for. So make sure you read those documents carefully. And then the last thing is taxes, all right? Um, when you buy a home, you, it's going to get reassessed. And the assessor is going to look at it and go, oh, this is the new value for this home based on what the new buyer has paid for it you're going to want to know what those taxes are going to be and uh, your lenders usually going to want to know too because oftentimes they're included in your escrow account with your mortgage payment and they were also a consideration when your lender pre-approved you remember so you're going to want to find out what those taxes are and that's part of that due diligence period there might be other things that are important to you during the due diligence period depending on the property and the location and some other things like that remember no house is perfect a lot of this stuff especially in inspection reports 
can be um, discussed with the seller and you may be able to negotiate um, a satisfactory compromise that gets maybe some of those items taken care of or maybe some kind of a credit. Um, hopefully you can work it out. Usually there's some happy ground, uh, happy medium or middle ground somewhere there that you can all agree upon. So um, try not to ask for too much because you may not get anything once you've made the seller mad and uh, hopefully you work it all out and if you find out anything that's during that investigation due diligence period that you don't like uh, you can back out not hold the seller up any further and you can go on and find another house okay so that's it for due diligence sorry about the long video we'll see you on the next one i promise it'll be shorter